Hello and welcome to this quick video about some neat tricks that you can do on your radio with your helicopter. Now there's already a complete series and I'll put a link down below if you want to go and check out the other videos in the series. I am a lapsed helicopter pilot that's come back into helicopters and been having a whale of a time with this OMP Hobby M2. Uh, links down below to where I got this one. Now there are some really cool tricks that you can do on the radio, something like this Radio Master TX16S, this is all the radio that I'm using to control that helicopter. And there are three things in particular that I've done on here that I thought would be worthwhile sharing. The first is how you can set up the telemetry, so it shows you the battery voltage on the helicopter, and will also warn you when the battery voltage is getting low, so it's time to come into land. The second being how to modify the throttle on the radio so that it's easier to hover. I know in particular when I was learning to fly that was something that I was really struggling with. The throttle felt extremely sensitive about the hover point and it was incredibly frustrating trying to get over that but there's a trick you can do. And finally talking about how you can set up an ODIR switch. These helicopters have the ability to self-right themselves and you can set up a little control very easily. I use my momentary switch here so that if I get into trouble and I'm doing something dumb, I can grab hold of that switch and pull it, and the helicopter will self-right and rise into the air and hopefully save itself if I've got enough height. So time codes to all this stuff down below if it's something in particular you want to watch, but uh, without messing about, let's get on the bench. I'll show you how to set these three things up. So the first tip is how to get the battery voltage displayed on the screen. If I plug my helicopter in here, uh, Always take the blades off, don't do what I'm doing here. Then you'll see that on the screen of the radio, I can actually see the main battery voltage. Now this is incredibly handy because it also allows me to set an alert here on the radio so that if the battery is getting low, it's gonna warn me that it's time to land. Let me just unplug the helicopter for safety and we'll lose, there we go, we'll lose the telemetry. Now the setup that I'm using on this particular model is I'm actually connecting to it using the OMP protocol that is available in the later versions of the multi-protocol stuff that's in the radio. Again, link below to how you would set that up for the M2. Now this means that I actually get some telemetry from the model and this is the telemetry you get. You get the battery voltages, you get the RSSI value, and you get the receive and transmit quality. A1 and A2 are the ones we're interested in. I'm just using A1 as that's giving me the flight battery voltage. Now, a couple of things that I'm doing here. First of all, is I'm setting up a logical switch so that when A1 goes less than 10.8 volts, logical switch will activate. Once it's activated, then what logical switch one does, there it is, logical switch one will play track battery low and it will play it one time. So that will let me know that something is going on. The other thing we can do is in the telemetry screen, if we hold and press the telemetry button and then go to the telemetry screen and say set up widgets, all I've done is I've just told it and I'm just gonna choose uh, the value that we need, which is going to be A1. Here's all the things that we can display. I'm just interested, there we go. We'll just go for standard A1. We'll, tip, we'll have it a nice bright color. And there we go, it's in our telemetry screen as well. So if we just exit out of all that, at the moment it's hard to see because it's blue. Once we connect the model, it will receive the telemetry. And there we have the battery voltage being displayed along with a warning. So that is the first big tip that I'll give you. That's a great way to just monitor the battery in flight. Second tip then is how can you make the model easier to hover? Particularly when you're learning, the throttle can feel very, very twitchy. So if you are a multi-rotor pilot, um, this might be something you've already experienced, but the Throttle is controlling both the head speed and the pitch at the same time. So a very small minute movement on the throttle can have the helicopter rising into the air quite quickly or sinking down to the ground quite quickly. And that, particularly when you're learning to fly, can be pretty hard work. Now, what you can do is if you know roughly what the hover value needs to be on the radio, we can 
decrease the sensitivity around that hover point and make that an awful lot easier. Now, this isn't something that's new. I've done videos on this before, but it's worthwhile revisiting it because I've set it up on this as well for that kind of last little bit coming into hover and landing gently. So what I've done is I've just set up a screen, a telemetry screen, just to show all of the channel values so I can see where the hover throttle needs to be. And on this particular model, it's around the 23, 24% is roughly where this thing is hovering nicely. Now, because we know what that is, and the way that I figured that out is all I did is just have this screen or um, displayed on the radio and kind of had a buddy by the side of me as it was hovering, or quickly glance down and look at channel three, which is that throttle value. Now we know that. Now we know that, then it gets an awful lot easier because what we can do is we can actually go and set up a curve that's gonna sort that out for us. So if I zoom across here, if we look at the um, inputs, you can see that I've got Expo, a little bit of Expo added. That's also very handy when you're learning to fly these things. But for the throttle channel, this is what I've done. I've added a curve that looks like this. Why would I do that? Well, normally it's a straight line. And by adding this curve, what it means is that as I increase the throttle, as it gets to the hover point, the, the amount of throttle change versus the amount of physical change on the throttle gets a lot less. So it's less sensitive around this throttle point. So around where it's hovering, I have very fine control, but I still have full control to stop the props and go to 100% throttle. And this is a little bit of a cheat, but it's one that can be incredibly useful when you're starting out. So how have I set this up? Well, if we come out of this and zoom across to the curves, if I just edit this first curve, this is the one that I've set up. Here is the curve. And all I've done is I've set the middle position to be the value of the throttle that it needs to be in the hover, which for the M2 seems to be about 24 on these radios using the OMP stuff. And then all I did was set one end of the, throt uh, the curve to be minus 100, the other end to be plus 100, so we still have full control, and then just set point two and four to be so that the the line around the hover position is less steep. Other big tip is turn on smoothing. That will make it nice as well. Once you've got that done, then all you need to do is go back into your inputs, modify the throttle, select curve as custom, and then once you've got that, select the curve that you've set up. I've called mine T just to remind me which is which. Now, obviously, this is probably not what you want if you're going to be using 3D idle up. So I've probably set it up so this was only available. It only actually did this on a particular switch. That would be a way to do it. So have this active when you are flying in normal mode as opposed to anything else. But this is a cute way to do it to make it easier to hover. The last thing I'll show you is how I've set up an ODIR switch. Now, because the M2 has a fly bar control unit that has two modes, like a 3D mode, 3D helicopter. and also a 6G stabilization mode, mode, I have got that set up on a switch. So if I just show you all the channels, what I'm doing is when I flick the switch for the different modes, 3D helicopter. I'm changing channel seven's value. You see that? So in stabilize mode, I want channel seven to be low. And we also know already that we want that this thing's hovering about 24% throttle. So we need channel three and channel seven to be affected by a switch on the radio. So the way I have it set up is if I'm flying, maybe I'm in 3D mode and I'm being a bit of an idiot and I get into trouble, I can pull a switch and immediately channel seven goes into stabilization mode and it gives me 40% throttle. So if I have enough height, the helicopter is going to flip over the right way and going to rise strongly into the air, hopefully well out of the way of whatever it is I was about to fly into. So let me show you how I've set that up. Let's come out of this. Go into the model. What I've done here is I have set up something called a special function. Now, 
There's lots of these already. Don't worry what all these are. These are all the things that are just playing the different tracks. So as I move the switches... It just helps me re remember what mode I'm in. And what I've done is I've set up two extra ones here down at the bottom. And what I've done is I've set it so that when SH, which is this momentary switch here on the corner, you can set up whichever switch you want, but it needs to be the switch that you'll remember to grab when things are going horribly wrong. I've got it set up so it'll override channel 7, which is the mode channel in this particular setup, for minus 100 that will give me the stabilization mode. That should flip the helicopter the right way round. And I'm also setting the same switch, SH, is overriding channel 3, which is the throttle channel, to 40. If you remember, we already figured out that it was hovering about 24. So if it was falling quickly to the ground, I probably want a little bit more throttle than that to arrest the descent. So I've set it for 40, but that might be something that you want to change. You might want a little bit more throttle. But that does mean now, as I'm flying around, if I have it in idle, up, idle up mode, 3D helicopter. 3D helicopter mode, and I'm flying around, I've been a bit of a goo, and I get into trouble, I can flick that switch, and immediately I go into stabilization mode for channel 7, and channel 3 gives me 40% throttle, which should hopefully give me enough to arrest any descent that I might to get myself into and climb gently to. So there's three things that hopefully will help you if you have an M2 and you have one of these radios. Uh, if you have any problems or questions, do pop them down below. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.